Hello friends, this video on electric current and its effects part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about heating effects of current. So far uh, we have discussed a couple of things, a couple of basic things about current. What is current? What makes current flow? Uh, what are the important things in an electric circuit? Now we will see that current also produces some other effects. It is not only uh, about blowing a bulb, it also has many additional effects when, when current flows through a wire. So now we are going to talk about the heating effects of current, which in simple words mean that if current is flowing through a circuit, it is able to produce some amount of heat. It sounds strange, but let us try to do this. Try to keep your hand, do not touch a glowing bulb. Just try to take your hand near a glowing bulb. Do not take it too near as well because your safety is first. So do not touch the bulb, do not take it very much near to the bulb, but at least take your hand a little near to the bulb. In one case, when the bulb is on. In another case, when the bulb is switched off, take your hand near the bulb. So do you observe any difference in the two cases? So you will see that in case one, the first case, when the bulb is glowing, you feel hot. Whereas in the second case, you do not feel hot. I mean, you do not feel cold as well, but you do not feel hot. So what does it show? The bulb is glowing because current is flowing through it. So current is producing some heating effect because of which we are feeling the heat. We are feeling hot. Whereas when there is no current flowing through the bulb, there is no heat being emitted and we are not feeling hot. So this is a simple experiment which you can try out yourself and you can prove that current produces heat. Now the question is where do we experience heating effects of current? I mean how is the heating effect of current useful or where do we use them? So let us look at some examples. The first common example would be the iron. So when you iron your clothes, you make use of it. So what do you do? You switch, you put the plug inside the socket, switch it on and after some time what happens? The iron becomes hot. So how is it becoming hot when you, you are switching it on? Now when you switch it on, a current flows through the circuit inside the iron. Now as current flows through it, there is a certain part of the iron which gets heated and that heat is then utilized to press clothes. So basically if you look at the internal structure of the iron box, you will see that there is a frame like this, a, a frame which is shaped like this inside, this is present inside and this is made up of nichrome which is like an alloy, a mixture of nickel and chromium. So nickel and chromium both are metals. So these both metals, they have a very high melting point. I mean, nichrome as a whole has a very high melting point and it also does not get easily oxidized. So that means it doesn't, you know, react with oxygen very easily. So these are the two uh, advantages with nichrome and that is why nichrome is used inside iron. So what happens when current passes through this, this nichrome, so it gets heated up and this heat is what we feel from outside and this heat is used to press your clothes. So that is one important advantage of heating effects of current. So iron is not the only example. There are a couple of other examples. For example, the geyser which we use in our bathrooms to heat water. How does a geyser work? So there are materials present inside the geyser which are known as the heating elements because it is due to those elements that the heating effect of current is experienced. So in this case, this would be termed as the heating element of iron. Had this part, had this part not been there, then we would have not experienced the heat of the iron. Right? So similarly, even inside the geyser, there is a heating element present and that heating element heats up and that heat is then used to make the water hot. 
The similar uh, concept is used even in case of immersion rods. In fact, something like this is only present as heating element inside the geyser. So these immersion rods can be very clearly seen that they are made up of some metals which when put into water and you uh, plug it and switch it on, after some time it gets heated up and the water also gets heated up. The hair dryer which is used to dry your hair very quickly, this also has a nichrome wire inside which is wrapped around an insulating mica board. So again nichrome here is also used because, see, because of the advantages of nichrome of having a high melting point not easily oxidized because of these advantages it is often used as a heating element in various appliances. So even in hair dryers if you have ever used a hair dryer you would have seen that when you plug it and switch it on you can actually feel a hot air being blown to your hair. And that hot air uh, helps your hair to dry. Another example could be the uh, electric heater which helps to uh, increase the temperature of the room. It helps to heat the room during winter season. So here also again you can actually see the presence of the heating element which are some metals which, are, which can be easily seen. So when the metals get heated up they actually transfer that heat to the room and that's how it acts as a room heater. So these are some of the applications where, where we can see how heating effects of current can be utilized. So now that we looked at so many applications of heating effect of current, how do we define heating effect of current? It is the production of heat when electric current passes through a material. In fact, that is what is happening. So when electric current passes through the filament of the bulb, due to this current, heat is produced which we feel when we keep our hand near the bulb. It is not necessary that all materials will show heating effect. So this effect is actually seen due to the presence of the heating element. So in this case the filament of the bulb it acts as the heating element and the presence of heating element is a must. So heating element can be defined as a coil of wire that has a very high melting point and it do not get oxidized when heated. So that's how we define heating element. So whichever material has this heating element, only that material will show heating effect of current. So appliances containing such elements when they are connected to an electric supply and then switched on, it gets heated up. Now there are various factors. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.